what a beautiful day to be out in the bank. We've got the shorts on, we've got the shades on, the sun's out, and hopefully there's some fish feeding. We are back at one of my favorite venues. This is Holly Farm. I used to visit this venue years ago and catch loads of fish. Now, there's a lot of restocking that's been going on at Holly Farm. A lot of F1s have gone in the lake, a lot of small carp. There's millions of fish, no shortage of fish whatsoever. But today is all about targeting those old warriors that I used to catch years ago. I fancy a bit of margin fishing. And if you look over there, hopefully you can see, my van's parked up, all ready to go. There's not many people here and we've managed to get one of my favorite pegs, one of my favorite margin pegs on the whole lake. So hopefully we're in for a good day. First things first, let's mix some ground bait. Let's get the gear out and see if we can catch a few. So folks, you can probably see, I've got most of the gear set up behind me. I've given my ground bait a nice big helping of water. I want to get that settled. I don't want any bits floating around. I want a nice, heavy, dense ground bait. So it's got to take on loads of water. Now the ground bait I'm using today is Swim Stim Match and it is the margin mix. Now this is quite a new mix. It's a really meaty, I mean, when you smell it, it doesn't smell like a fish man. It smells, it smells meaty. It smells really rich and meaty. And I think, well, I'm hoping that that's going to attract a few better fish. That's what it's designed for. I'm hoping today we're going to catch some of those old warriors, some of those fish that I used to catch all those years ago. And this might just help us avoid a few F1s and catch those bigger fish. Just because we're fishing for big fish and just because we're fishing in the margins though, we've still got to rid of the ground bait. Not only does that distribute the water through the mix nicely, it just gets rid of those stodgy lumps that you get when you add loads of water to a ground bait. So I'm just going to whack this through a riddle. Now, because this is a margin mix, there is quite a few bigger bits in it already. And I sort of want to keep them in the ground bait. I mean, it's not a really overly coarse ground bait, but you can still feel when I rub that through the riddle that there's some bigger bits. And look, so you can see on the riddle there, there's those bigger coarser bits. And you know what? I want to keep them. So as long as I've rubbed the sort of the stodgy way, all those like stodgy, stodgy little marbles of ground bait, I'll whack them back in the ground bait, give it another fluff through. And there we go, finished ground bait. Like I say, really heavy. I can't get over how meaty the mix is, but I think that's gonna be really attractive. Now, as I say, we've got most of the gear set up. I've put a rig up. We've not had a plumber around yet, so I think that's our next job. Right, plumbing up time. So, as always, nice heavy plummet we're using heavy elastics today i've got a blue shock core in my pole which is probably the equivalent of a 14 or a 16 elastic it's obviously a hollow elastic though so nice and robust that means i've got to use a heavy plummet that's a 30 gram plummet i'm going to get a really positive reading with my 30 gram plummet now let me just talk to you about plumbing up in the margins because on a venue like this, where the bottom is really gradual, it's sloping away nice and gradually, what I like to do is sort of like try and, try and find a depth. So I like to set my rig at a certain depth because I know, even though it has been warm the last few days, those carp are not gonna come into that depth. So it's pointless me trying to find that depth. And likewise, if I was to set my rig at sort of like two and a half, three foot deep, it's probably going to be a bit too deep for ground bait to work. I'm just going to get line bite. So I need to find a particular depth. Now, we're fortunate here at Holly Farm that, like I say, the bottom is quite a gradual shelf. So I'm going to set the rig. There we go. I'm going to set the rig at around 18 inches deep. And let's see if we can find that depth somewhere. Now, the reason I've set up here is because it's a classic margin swim. It sweeps around a corner. When I used to fish this lake, years ago this used to be always a, a good area because the prevailing wind sort of like blew into this area probably need another section and what we've got is we've got a bit of space so we can fish into the the spare peg and up against the spare peg so it's, it's probably 10 or 11 meters down the bank i'm just trying to find like a nice flat ish area, preferably close to the bank as well, 
So we've got a little bit of cover for the fish to feel a little bit safe. You can already see, I'm gonna add a, a little bit of depth to that because we're not quite right yet. Probably need to add a couple of inches, so. You might notice that I've got a really long line on the rig and that's not how we're gonna fish, it's just how it's come off the winder. It's a, it's a really nice float, this float that I'm using today. It's, a, it's got a lot of uses and quite often I'll use it for shallow fishing or flicking a rig past, past my pole tip up against an island maybe. And uh, when I put them on the winder, I like to keep plenty of line above the float just in case I'm gonna use it for that. So we will cut it down once we start fishing, but there we go. that's a reasonably flat area that is. What I'm looking for is a flat area, probably the size of a dinner plate maybe, where I can present my feed and hook bait nicely. Trouble is if the bottom's all over the place, you just end up getting loads of line bites. So there we go, that's, that's about spot on. I'm happy with that. So I've plumbed that up to bang on the depth and then when we put that on our pole I'm just going to add a, an inch of line to the rig just to make sure that we're always fishing. So that's the depth that we're, we've found. And I'm just going to add, like I say, an inch of line. That just makes sure that we're definitely on the bottom at all times. Nice still hook bait for those big fish. Right, let's cut a bit of line off and then we'll talk about the rig. Quite often when I'm margin fishing, I don't want a long length of line. The water's reasonably coloured today, so I'm not too worried about the pole tip spooking the fish. So just cut that down, retie that knot. Get rid of any of the spare line. Right, rig wise, we've already mentioned the elastic, nice strong elastic, blue shot core elastic. We've got 016 main line, we've got an 016 hook length. The hook is a size 14, nice strong 14 because we've been using big baits, like I say, hopefully catching some big fish. Shotting for the rig is just a little bulk of number nines, you might spread them out slightly above that four inch hook length, but a little bulk of number nines just above a four inch hook length. We'll just spread them out over maybe a two inch, a two inch area. Just so we can distribute the weight a little bit better throughout the rig. Right, float wise, it's a MIDI MW. It's a four by 12s, nice short stumpy float, fiberglass stem, two mil bristle. The eyes on these floats are tied in so it just means that they're extra strong. And like I say, it's got loads of uses, shallow fishing, up against islands maybe, we can fish them in the margins. Just a really nice all round float for your commercial fishery work. So there we go, really basic rig. We've plumbed up, we're just about ready to fish. I think what we'll do is we'll put in a little bit of bait because we've not fed anything yet. We'll put in a little bit of bait. On the bait tray, we've got some maggots, dead maggots from the weekend and we've got Nice ball of worms. Got more worms behind me, but I don't envisage feeding any. Those worms are for maybe later on in a session, or if I want to fish a really big target bait, I think a worm is a brilliant bait for fishing in the margins over ground bait. So let's start the swim. Now, this is where I think quite a few people just get it wrong, get it wrong with the margin fishing. So we're not late in the session. We don't know what's going to happen today. So the last thing I want to do is feed loads and loads of bait. I've probably fit, fed there, or put in my pot, a quarter of a pot of ground bait, and maybe 30 or 40 maggots. No more than that. We just want to kick off the swim. Don't get me wrong, if we start catching loads and loads of fish later on in the day, we might end up feeding all of our ground bait and we might be filling that pot to the brim. 
and whacking loads of ground bait in. But just for now, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to put that ground bait in in a reasonably tight area. Then, I'm just going to cup in over the top some water. I just want to make sure that those fish know that there's some food in the area. And I'm almost trying to replicate someone packing up by cupping in that water. Right, we've fed a bit of bait. I'm going to let that settle for a couple of minutes. I'm just going to tidy up my gear around, make sure everything's sorted. And then hopefully we'll get fishing, catch a few fish. Right, we're just about to get going. So I'm going to refeed again. You know how I like to fish. I always like to set a trap of some description and I always like to be fish, fishing over some bait. So we're going to feed nice helping of maggots again, a little bit of ground bait. What I'm hoping is that bait that we fed maybe five or 10 minutes ago to kick the swim off, I'm hoping it's been eaten to be honest. And I'm hoping that that bait that I'm putting in there is just gonna pull, pull those fish that were initially attracted it's going to pull them back and it's going to pinpoint them right where, right where I want to catch them. So let's start hook bait wise. Let's start with classic margin hook bait, a nice bunch of maggots. We've been feeding a few maggots. So I think it's worth putting some maggots on the hook. There we go, six or seven maggots, nice big bait. Hopefully for a big fish. Now, I'm not too sure what response we're gonna get. I'm hoping it's gonna be a good one because this used to be an amazing peg back in the day for margin fishing. There's a load of debris on the water surface, load of scum on the surface. The wind's blowing down this end. The depth's absolutely perfect. I've seen a few fish moving around. So although we're not fishing this particular method at probably the right time of day, I'm still hoping that some fish are going to be around. You know, if you're, oh, <laughs> got to bite first chuck. <laughs> if you're um, ever fortunate enough to either draw a peg like this in a match where you've got loads of space, or you turn up to a fishery and you find that you've got a load of room in one corner and this is the this is the approach for you not exactly the target species first drop in a little tiny f1 beautiful little fish not exactly what we're after though i think we'll, we'll just have another go on maggots and see what happens we'll repeat that process because as always we're setting the trap, remember that. So a bit of ground bait, a few maggots. If, the, if these little fish are too much of an issue, we'll probably end up cutting the maggots out and just fishing ground bait and, and putting a big worm over the top or double worm. But you've got to make decisions fast when you're, well, any style of fishing, but especially margin fishing, because quite often your window of opportunity is so short. Later on in the session, you've, you've probably run out of time. Either you've got to get home or the match is just about to finish. So you've got some time constraints on you and you need to make decisions fast. So we go, bunch of maggots again. We're not after those little left ones, we're after some big old warriors, so. Let's try again. I'm sort of like trying to lay the rig in, in amongst that, that scum. There's a lot of fish there. That's why the bulk is so low in the rig trying to get the bait down and hold it still. There you go, that's sitting nice.
There's definitely quite a few fish there, but we just, well, I'm hoping that they're, they're not going to be those little tiny F1s or silverfish. There's a lot of silverfish in this lake, an indication then. A oh, little little dink on the float and we're attached to the proper fish. Oh, I love it when they do that three point turn out of the swim, that big head nod and they make the way out of the peg like that. It's beautiful fishing when you when you manage to catch them. Now this isn't a venue where you know people turn up and they catch two, three hundred pounds. It's a venue where quite often weights of around 60 to 100 pound wins the matches. So I'd say your classic commercial fishery, it's not one of these big weight commercials. I don't know if this is a, a massive fish, but we'll see. Always a nice fish. I'd say there's quite a few double figure fish in here, but I think the average size of carp is gonna be four to seven pounds, something like that. from reasonably heavy elastic. Now this is something that I see a lot of people do, pulling that puller bung straight away. As soon as they get the fish to the net, it's like a, an instant reaction to getting the fish to the net when they get the fish to the net. But we're on a heavy elastic. There's no point pulling that puller bung. The last thing we want to be doing is stripping that puller bung out, putting loads of extra pressure on the fish. Now, if I was on light elastic, maybe a different matter, but on heavy elastic, let the elastic absorb the pressure of that fish nodding against the, the pole tip. There you go, nice, nice common. We're not bothering with a keep net today. Very rare I put a keep net in for anything other than a match. There we go, cracking fish. Don't know, what is it? Four or five pounds, something like that. I think that's a great start. We'll carry on with the session. I'm thinking we'll carry on with maggots and ground bait. Then maybe up the feed later on, fish a big worm over the top and hopefully the fish increase in size. But I think that's a great start. Well, we are having a really nice day. We're catching, well, we're catching a fish every chuck. But what I'm going to admit is that they are not the stamp that we're after. Catching a lot of little carp, catching a lot of F1s. You know, there's just no amount of massive fish, those big carp that we're after. But I'm hoping to change that. So last couple of fish, we've had them on worms. I've just started increasing the amount of ground bait that we're feeding. I felt that just feeding those maggots was, it was bringing little fish into the swim, I'm sure it was. So what I'm trying to do is increase the ground bait feed and fish bigger baits over the top. So we've changed the rig. We've taken off one of the trimming shot. That just means a bit more float bristle sticking out. And that is because a bigger bait requires more float bristle. And we are fishing a nice big bait. We're fishing double worm. Let me just show you what we're doing. So, breaking the head off, hooking that one through the broken end and out through the side, and then hooking his mate so he sits next to him, look. Now you can see there that those worms are wriggling like mad, which you would do if someone's just took your head off. But, Amazingly, what I've found is, unless I'm fishing for perch, I always feel that I get more bites on a bait that is a bit more static. So, by slapping it on the water, it stuns the worms. And that just seems to get me more bites, especially when I'm carp fishing in the edge. Let's see if it works today. We have had a couple of fish on worms already. 
and I'm just hoping that this is the way of catching those bigger fish. So, like I say, we're having a great day. We're catching plenty of fish, but it'd be nice to catch a couple of bigger ones. Loads of indications. When you think that it was only a couple of weeks ago that you were struggling for bites on a lot of venues, you can just see what a spell of mild weather has done to, to the fishing. God, we can hardly get the rig in the water. There's so many fish there now. It might be a case that we, we blow the peg by feeding too much ground bait, but you know I'm quite positive. I like to push the peg if I can, and I just feel that there's plenty of fish feeding. I can see some bigger fish cruising around on the surface. If we can force them into the margins, maybe make them come into the edge a little bit earlier than they than they want to normally. It could be the way to go, just feeding that little bit of extra bait, but we will see. Obviously, there's different ways of feeding your big old tail next to the float there. There's different ways of uh, feeding your, your margin, and this is just one particular way. I mean, we could have just gone down there, fed quite frugally, we could have just rattled in a few six mils or maybe a few bits of corn. And I think we, I think we'd have caught today, but the problem with that method is, I just feel that we would have definitely got plagued by those, by those F1s. There we go, better fish. I've seen a, a tail break the surface, maybe 30 seconds before we had this bite. And maybe feeding that extra bait is the, is the way to do it. I'm not saying that the fish we have been catching are, are a waste of time because they're not. They've been chunky F1s, they've been little little carp. You know, in a match, we're more than happy catching those fish. But I just think for the purpose of what we're doing today, it's big fish that we're after. There we go. Like I say, there's no monstrous, well, there's not loads of monstrous fish in this venue, but it's all about targeting the better fish. And this is a, an old warrior. Probably been in this lake several years. There we go. So there we go, ground bait, dead maggots, bit of worm maybe, and a very meaty ground bait mix. God, he won't say still. A very meaty ground bait mix, which I think might just help me attract some better quality fish, sort the quality fish out from those F1s. A great way of fishing. I'm going to carry on for a little bit longer. Until next time, folks, tight lines.